No Sugar is a play by Jack Davis, commissioned by the Australian Elizabethan Theatre Trust for the 1985 Festival of Perth. The play tells the story of the Millamurra Monday family struggle to survive during the period of the Great Depression and its enduring, misguided, protection of the West Australian Government's fisheries, forestry, wildlife and Aborigines department. The play focuses on the chief protector of Aborigines, Obear Octavius Neville and his protection of the natives and the lives of these natives such as the Millamurra Mondays. The family, the Millamurra Mondays, comprise Grand Monday, who has two children, Jimmy Monday, the main character, and Millie Millamurra, who is married to Sam Millamurra. They have three children, of which Joe is the eldest. Sissy and David are currently still in school. The family has to live in poverty and rely on government rations, which get progressively less due to the budget cutbacks. First soap is cut, followed by meat and fat. The family was initially living happily, albeit poverty stricken, near Northam, which is roughly 100 kilometres northeast of Perth. However, at the end of Act 1, they are forcibly relocated and sent to the overcrowded Moor River native settlement. This was under the pretense of there being an epidemic of scabies amongst the natives. Joe meets Mary de Guru there and falls in love. Superintendent N. S. Neal has a reputation of sexually molesting the indigenous girls who work at the hospital. When a very pregnant Mary is ordered to work there, she refuses and is whipped by a cat of nine tails by Neil. When Joe gets out of prison for absconding with a minor and learns of Mary's whipping, he wants to avenge her against Neil. But it is Mary who calms him and asks instead if he can ask Neil if they can leave the settlement. Joe and Mary are used by Davis's representatives of a new start and a new generation for the Northern Indigenous families languishing at Moore River. The play explores several themes such as injustice. This is shown at a number of points in the play. For example, the cutting of the natives' rations, the forcible relocation of the Indigenous people from Northam's government well reserve to Moore River, and Neil's molesting of Aboriginal girls at Moore River. Family. This is shown most strongly through the Millamurra Monday family staying together no matter what befalls them, as there is so much segregation between whites and indigenous people already, an indigenous family will often stay together as it gives them a semblance of strength and force as a team. Even if the family unit has broken down internally, they will still endure a lifetime of family disunity. Even the dispossession of their homeland near Northam was not enough to break the family up. Racism. We see this perpetrated at both a governmental and personal level. It is significant that it is Neville who suggests to the minister how to meet the budgetary constraints. Cut back on basic rations to the people he is supposed to be protecting. Then there is the people, particularly the council of Northam itself that do not want the indigenous people there, not wanting their kids going to school with the native kids. Aboriginal identity. Davis, seems to show the Aboriginal identity can be maintained through family and a sense of place. This is even after enduring racism and abuse as well as the ravages of poverty. Even after their forcible relocation to Moore River, the return of Joe and Mary to Northam, along with their newborn baby, allows for a reconnection to their sense of place. Poverty. This is shown from the very first scene when we are introduced to the Millamurra Mondays for example, David is playing cricket with his sister using a homemade bat and ball and the ever-reducing rations due to budget constraints. Possession and Dispossession David uses the Millamurra Monday family to demonstrate how white expansionist policies lead to the dispossession of local indigenous people. This dispossession is not only physical but also cultural. The physical dispossession is most obviously shown through the forcible relocation of the northern indigenous people to Moore River. The cultural dispossession is shown through the corroboree organised by Jimmy, Joe, Sam, Billy and Bluey. There is a hint it was done in secret as it is located in a clearing in the pine plantation 
at Moor River and was held at night. It is also shown through the compulsory Sunday school classes for the Indigenous children, an apparent attempt at the indoctrination by the authorities. In 1986, No Sugar was chosen to go overseas to the World Theatre Festival in Vancouver, Canada. In the same year, Davis became a member of the Order of Australia and his play, No Sugar, was co-winner of the Australian Writers Guild Award for Best Stage Play. No Sugar, along with The Dreamers and Barungan, formed the Firstborn Trilogy. He died in March 2000. No Sugar could be interpreted as a protest play against the effects of government policies on Indigenous people in general through depicting such effects on one particular Indigenous family. It could also be interpreted as a play of hope in that it shows a particular family's triumph against oppression and attempted assimilation through institutionalisation and dispossession.